हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक इन द क्लास ऑफ मोसवायर स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस द इंटरप्रटेशन ऑफ मोसवायर स्पेक्ट्रा इन टर्म्स ऑफ आइसोमर शिफ्ट द टर्म्स यूज्ड इन द इंटरप्रटेशन ऑफ मोसवायर स्पेक्ट्रा द फॉलोइंग थ्री टर्म्स are generally used in the interpretation of mosvar spectra and these terms are given below first of all isomer shift second one is quadrupole splitting and third one is magnetic field effects and hyperfine splitting now the question arises what is isomer shift if the ground state nucleus present in the sample or absorber is in a chemical environment different from the source if the ground state nucleus present in the sample or absorber is in a chemical environment different from the source it does not absorb the same frequency of gamma ray as emitted by the source it means the excitation of ground state nucleus present in the sample or absorber requires gamma ray with frequency different from that emitted from the source this effect is expressed in terms of isomer shift it is abbreviated as is and isomer shift is also called chemical shift this term is similar to the term chemical shift used in nmr spectroscopy the isomer shift is reported is expressed in centimeter per second or millimeter millimeter per second it is the doppler velocity of the source please note that the isomer shift is reported in centimeter per second or millimeter per second it is nothing but the doppler velocity of the source relative to the sample or absorber it can be it means isomer shift can be converted to hertz or megahertz but it is generally not necessary the isomer shift gives the greatest amount of chemical information from the mosvar spectra it means the isomer shift is the most powerful tool in the interpretation of mosvar spectra and it gives maximum amount of chemical information the mosvar spectra are generally plotted between the counts of gamma rays per channel and the doppler velocity of the source on the x axis we take doppler velocity of the source and on the y axis we take counts of gamma rays per channel please note that the detector used in the in instrumentation of mosvar spectroscopy is a multi channel analyzer it gives the counts of gamma rays in different channel during plotting mosvar spectra we plot doppler velocity against counts of gamma rays per channel on x axis we take doppler velocity and on y axis we take number of gamma rays counts of gamma rays per channel the doppler velocity of the source at which the sample exhibits resonance absorption the doppler velocity of the source at which the sample exhibits resonance absorption the counts of gamma rays decreases largely and an absorption peak is obtained let us understand it again the doppler velocity of the source at which the sample exhibits resonance absorption means gamma rays are absorbed then the counts of gamma rays will decrease 
as a result an absorption peak will be obtained the doppler velocity may be positive or negative the positive doppler velocity means the source is moving towards the sample or absorber on the other hand the negative doppler velocity indicates that the source is moving away from the absorber the mosh wire spectrum of ferrocyanide iodine that is fecn whole 64 minus ion is given in the following diagram on x axis we have taken doppler velocity and on y axis we have taken counts of gamma rays per channel which is increasing in the upwards direction and absorption peak is obtained at minus 0.5 mm per second it means here the number of gamma rays is very small that is absorption takes place and it is the absorption peak at this velocity minus 0.5 mm per second doppler velocity ferrocyanide iodine exhibits resonance absorption this is why at this doppler velocity of the source the number of gamma rays per channel decreases and an absorption peak is obtained it is obvious that ferrocyanide iodine exhibits a single sharp absorption peak ferrocyanide iodine exhibits a single sharp absorption peak at the doppler velocity about minus 0.5 mm per second and it is with reference to the excited fe nucleus in a cobalt 57 source as zero it means the isomer shift of this source is taken to be zero the magnitude of isomer shift depends upon following factors and most important factor is electron density at the nucleus greater the electron density at the concerned nucleus greater will be the magnitude of isomer shift it means the magnitude of isomer shift increases with increase in the electron density at the concerned nucleus we know that p and d atomic orbitals have zero electron density at the nucleus please note that p and d atomic orbitals have zero electron density at the nucleus while the s orbital has significant electron density at the nucleus as evident from the following figure this is s orbital it is p orbital and it is d orbital in s orbital this is the position of nucleus and the sided area represents the electron density there is significant electron density at the nucleus in s orbital in p orbital this is the position of nucleus and here the electron density is zero and what about d orbital here also the electron density at the nucleus is zero please note it again that the electron density at the nucleus is zero in p and d atomic orbitals on the other hand in the case of s atomic orbital there is significant electron density at the nucleus therefore the electron density at the nucleus is significant in the case of s orbital thus by the measurement of isomer shift it is possible to estimate it is possible to determine s electron density electron density in s orbital from the knowledge of s electron density it is possible to predict the character of bond of atoms attached to the mosh wire nucleus if we know the s electron density 
from the measurement of isomer shift it is possible to predict the character of bond of atoms attached to the mos bar source for example the isomer shifts of mos bar isotope sn119 in a series of its compounds are given in the following table the isomer shifts of sn119 in a series of its compounds are given in the following table isomer shift of sn in various valence states valence state of t electronic configuration of t s electron density and isomer shift which has been expressed in millimeter per second sn4 plus i its electronic configuration will be 5s0 5p0 number of electrons in the s orbital is 0 isomer shift is 0 if sn is tetra coordinated forming covalent bond there will be sp3 hybridization and the number of electrons in the s orbital will be 1 its isomer shift is 2.1 in the case of sn2 plus ionic state the electronic configuration is 5s2 it means there are two electrons in the s orbital s electron density is 2 and the isomer shift is 3.7 mm per second it is not worthy that it is obvious from the above table that the isomer shift increases with increase in the electron density in the s orbital as the electron density in s atomic orbital increases the electron density at the nucleus will increase and consequently the isomer shift will also increase thus from the knowledge of isomer shift of tin in its compound it is possible to predict the nature of bonding in it therefore if we know the isomer shift of tin in its compound it is possible to predict the nature of bonding in that compound let us illustrate it sn4 plus we have seen that its electronic configuration is 5s0 5p0 sn tetra coordinated covalently bonded there is sp3 hybridization and number of electrons in s orbital is 1 here the number of electrons in s orbital was 0 sn2 plus sn 5s2 5p0 the number of electrons in the s orbital is 2 number of electrons in s orbital increases 0 1 2 the electron density the s electron density it means the electron density at the nucleus increases and accordingly the isomer shift will also increase the second factor affecting the isomer shift is nuclear size the size of the nucleus is another important factor which affects the magnitude of isomer shift the nucleus in the excited state usually has different radius than its ground state please note that the nucleus in the excited state generally has different radius than its ground state the radius of the excited nucleus may be a smaller or greater than the radius of its ground state nucleus the isomer shift in terms of nuclear size and s electron density can be given by the following relationship is equals to k into rho ex square minus rho gd square R E X minus R G D divided by R G D. Here, K is universal proportionality constant. 
RGD radius of the ground state nucleus, REX radius of the excited state nucleus, rho GD square S electron density at the ground state nucleus and rho EX square S electron density at the excited state nucleus. For a given nucleus, this term is constant. Therefore, the relative S electron densities can be determined with the help of isomer shift. If we know the value of isomer shift, the relative S electron densities can be determined because this term is constant. However, the sign of isomer shifts depends upon whether the excited nucleus is smaller or larger than ground state nucleus. The sign of isomer shift depends whether REX is greater than RGD or smaller than RGD. The sign of isomer shift depends upon this factor. For example, in the case of iodine-129 nucleus, the excited nucleus is larger than ground state nucleus and isomer shift will be positive because this term is greater than this term and therefore isomer shift will be positive. On the other hand, in the case of iodine-127 nucleus, the excited nucleus is smaller and hence isomer shift is negative because this term is smaller than RGD in the case of iodine-127. However, these facts have not been explained so far. Thank you for watching the video with concentration. Please like, share and subscribe it so that more useful, more fruitful videos can be presented before you in future.